Residents in Gaza spent yet another night surrounded by the ruins of pulverized neighborhoods, darkened by a near total power outage as the war between Israel and Palestine entered its sixth day on Thursday. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to crush and destroy Hamas, the political and militant organization currently governing the Gaza Strip. Netanyahu has the support of a new war cabinet that includes a longtime opposition critic. Israel, meanwhile, launched new airstrikes, pummeling the beleaguered strip and said it was preparing for a possible ground invasion. International aid groups warned that the death toll in Gaza could mount after Israel stopped all deliveries of food, water, fuel and electricity. On top of that, the tiny enclave's crossing with Egypt is closed. The war, ignited by a bloody and wide-ranging assault on Israel by Hamas militants, has already claimed at least 2,500 lives on both sides. As Israel pounds Gaza, Hamas fighters have fired thousands of rockets into Israel since their weakened assault. Militants in the territory are also holding an estimated 150 people taken hostage from Israel. Already, Palestinians fleeing airstrikes could be seen running through the streets, carrying their belongings and looking for a safe place. A large number of dead bodies have started piling up at the hospitals in Gaza as the death toll rose to 1,200 early Thursday. The Palestinian Health Ministry said 51 people were killed in what the Israeli military called a large-scale attack in the hours before daylight. Israel's energy minister, Israel Katz, said nothing would be allowed into Gaza until the captives were released. The Israeli military said more than 1,300 people, including 222 soldiers, have been killed in Israel. A staggering toll unseen since the 1973 war with Egypt and Syria that lasted weeks. Israel says roughly 1,500 Hamas militants were killed inside Israel and that hundreds of the dead inside Gaza are Hamas members. Back in Israel, the smell of death permeates the entire Biri kibbutz, an agricultural community in southern Israel neighboring Gaza. Hamas militants attacked this community on October 7, leaving more than 100 civilians dead. Several bodies of Hamas militants still lie covered on the ground in this agricultural community. The Israel Defense Forces spokesperson Jonathan Conrickus on Thursday provided a situational update on all fronts as the war against Palestine continues. Daily update. We are nearing the beginning of the sixth day of this war that was forced upon us. And I would like to give you an update about the situation on the ground. Uh, to make things clear, we have a map and I'll use that in order to show the places that I'm talking about. Today, uh, earlier today, many international journalists were given a unique opportunity to see, experience and tell the world some of the atrocities that Hamas inflicted on Israeli civilians. Yesterday, it was a community called Nachal Oz. Today, international media visited Be'eri. Kibbutz Be'eri, this is the Gaza Strip here, as I'm sure you're all, all too familiar, if we zoom in, closer, we can see that if we zoom in and see the distance between the Gaza Strip here, the border and our fence, and then we have Kibbutz Be'eri here. So quite a distance, not at all the closest community, Nachal Oz and Kfar Aza were much closer, but definitely one of the communities that was close, and today, I'll zoom in on the community itself, uh, you can see the lush green trees. Uh, the grass and the nice houses and agricultural areas, unfortunately, that is no longer how Kibbutz Be'eri looks. So out of 1,000 people, Israelis, who lived in this beautiful community, more than 100 were killed. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Israel on Thursday, pledging support and seeking to manage U.S. hostage crisis. Blinken met PM Benjamin Netanyahu soon after his arrival in Israel. Earlier, he spoke to reporters shortly before flying to Israel. We are heading, as you know, to uh, Israel, and I'm going with a very simple and clear message on behalf of the President of the United States and on behalf of the American people. And that is that the United States has Israel's back. We have the back of the Israeli people. We have their back today, we'll have it tomorrow, 
We will have it every day. We stand resolutely against terrorism. We've seen the almost indescribable acts committed by Hamas against Israeli men, women and children. Every day we're learning more and it is simply heartbreaking. Not since ISIS have we seen this kind of depravity and we will continue to stand very resolutely against it. Uh, when I'm in Israel, I'll have the opportunity to meet with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, President Herzog, uh, other senior officials. Uh, I look forward to seeing our embassy teams uh, as well that's been doing terrific work during uh, these difficult days. Um, we're determined to make sure that Israel gets everything it needs to defend itself, to provide for the security of its people. Already, significant military assistance requested by Israel is on the way. That's on top of everything that we've been doing uh, for years, including with the Memorandum of Understanding that was negotiated by President Obama uh, to make sure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself. Around the same time, the Council of the League of Arab States held an extraordinary session under Morocco to consult and coordinate on ways to stop the dangerous escalation and aggression against the Gaza Strip. The Arab ministers emphasized the centrality of the Palestinian issue and the necessity of fulfilling all the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people. Among them, first and foremost, they said, was the Palestinians' right to self-determination and a safe and dignified life in their independent sovereign state with East Al-Qudus as its capital. They also called on the Israeli regime to implement its obligations as the occupying power and stop all illegal Israeli measures that perpetuate the occupation.